He lay on her, panting with closed lids, stroking her face. She found his finger and sucked on it. They lay in their heaven for hours. What time is it, Kyle? Yes, I really knew someone by that name. And yes, I described my character exactly after him. A little taller. I can't move. They laughed. She rolled atop him and kissed him. Babe, it's been a long time for me, but she shut, she cut him off. No, I have had sex once before. She fell silent after that. I can't believe we finally made love. Do you know how long I have waited? No, I'm not exactly sure. Why don't you share that with me? She pinched his cheek. I have loved you since the first time I saw you, August 16th, 1985. I too was too afraid to say anything, especially being in the mail room and all. I didn't care that you worked in the mail room. You dress badly though. <laughs> I still remember that burgundy pant outfit. You remember that? I don't believe it. Why didn't you ever say anything? Well, I couldn't until I found out how old you were, and then at that time my wife was dying and it wouldn't have been appropriate. Hmm, <laughs> baby. She crossed his, her leg over his. What is it? Don't worry. Now that it's over, it's over now and we have each other. You're right. I'm so sorry. We still have. We have so little time to be together. What do you mean? I mean, I don't know how you feel. I don't want to just assume that because we made love that you're mine and, and all that, you know, storybook stuff. Well, I think that's what it means. You know, that's her, right? <laughs> and don't go getting all quiet on me now. What do you want from me? She sat up in bed. I don't know. I guess uh, we, we know each other pretty well already, but why don't we go out on a couple of dates to satisfy my old-fashioned desire. <laughs> she fell onto his chest and laughed. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's sometimes you think you've changed and you read something you wrote. I think I wrote this one. Um, Yeah. I worked at Xerox. Xerox is really huge. One acre square. One, one, yeah. So Cynthia worked at one end of the lobby. I worked at the other end. So I, we'd stay on the phone, of course, a lot talking, but the, the big wigs came in on her side of the building. So I call her, I say, Cynthia, what are you doing? She says, oh, I'm writing. I said, what are you writing? She says, I'm writing a story. I would fill up the eight and a half hours that I worked every day. Okay, cool. So I started writing about Belinda and something. Anyway, she was a rich um, black young girl. Yes, all my characters are, most of my characters are black except the men. And only one girl so far. And I had no clue I was white then. <laughs> and that, until after I wrote the whole thing, and my mom was like, she's white. And I'm like, she says, you're white. And I'm like, yeah, mom, you always said I'm your only white child. Stop doing that. Leave me alone. She says, no, you're white in the story, Tasha. And I'm like, chemical dress wrapped around her. Oh, I, yeah, oh, I didn't even notice. Had not a clue. Hang on. So, um, I was, uh, just not thinking, because I'm telling you in the story. And back then, how did I do it then? Oh, yeah, I wrote then, like I write now. But in 80, uh, 2005, when I wasn't working, I would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I'd write and write and write and write until generally 3 o'clock the next morning and the story is done and I'd put it away for a while. Oh God, I miss those days. Oof, that was wonderful. Just to be able to write the story to completion. Uh, uh, 25,000 words plus and just get it all over with. But in any case, uh, I digress. The qu to answer your question, honey, um, I write very detailed 
scenes because when I was a virgin, I just didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't understand how something could feel good because when I was a kid, I couldn't even put a tampon in there, least of all anything else. Okay, so 23. Okay, I went to business college at uh, 19. No, 20. 21. I met Leon Lewis. If you're still out there, Leon, I remember you well. Leon Lewis, wow. Uh, and I remember actually seeing, not in Penthouse, Playboy, whatever the pictures the naked boys are in, uh, but an actual real one. And in my mother's den, I'll never forget, he had red shorts on or the orange with his yellow shirt, t shirt. And I'm like, where the hell is that going to go? It was huge, even, even still till today. He was like, you know, the top three that were like 10 plus. And I'm like, and then I went into the kitchen and I'm like, Mom, it's huge. Where the heck is that supposed to go? And she's like, oh, my baby. And she's just standing in the kitchen crying. It was so funny. But I distinctly remember thinking, that could not possibly feel good. It just couldn't. Because I had tried having sex with Eric when I was 17, and it felt like somebody sticking a needle in that soft, you know, tissue down there. And uh, that, that was just not enjoyable whatsoever. Him being pressed on top of me was very enjoyable. I do remember that. Um, yeah, Eric Ace Johnson, who looked if you, if, on the front cover of my, of my um, YouTube, you see me. Um, him <laughs> and Eric looked just like that except he had thick long although he waist long blonde hair in high school at 63 thus you know tend, you tend to love whatever your first love was I think though I love everything I, I do not discriminate um, but yeah and it just so by the time, let's see, I moved here in 83, and then there was Keith, and you can actually look at a penis and just watch. And then, I, and then still today, I am so enamored by, you know, the things just moving on their own and everything. And you, have you ever just sat and blew on the guy's balls? And they just move by themselves? Oh my God, that is just so fascinating to me. I'm like, you know, and I got to send this to, um, <laughs> what's his name, Rockerware.